Hello, welcome to a quick little overview of Olive. Now, Olive is a nonlinear video editor. It is free and open source, and you can download the code and the program itself from olivevideoeditor.org. And this is what your main interface more or less will look like. Um, these may be resized differently and you can resize them as well and you can make that bigger make this bigger depending on your needs and what exactly you're doing so just a quick overview we have the I don't know if it's called the media pool or media bin this is where you put all your media files uh, this middle section here you have a media viewer and this will change around as well you can move things so if I want I can actually make this a pop out and I can make the media viewer and the projects or the sequence viewer share that space and have just the effects in this middle one and yeah again you can move these around all this uh, you can change the zoom size of those or change it to a tree view if you want to do that um, you get super tiny thumbnails which are really too small to see anything and yeah there's no way to change that um, and then yes yeah, so we have the effects which we'll get to when we get to so first things first, let's look at adding media to the pool. So it's very simple. I have an image sequence here of 119 frames. Actually, I think it's 120 because it starts at zero. Yes. So if we click on the first sequence and just first image rather, click and drag it in, it says it appears to be part of an image sequence. Would you like to import it as such? And we say yes. And there's a little bug here that it's showing every image sequence as this die image. I don't know why because that's not what it is. Oh, helps if we go to the sequence viewer, I suppose, because this is what the sequence really is. There's just uh, some rotating little warning signs, so I can double this up if I want to play a little longer, like that, and click and drag to make a box and select. Control L will join them, so now they act as one piece, and you can also select multiple and move them around if you want. Um, but this has an alpha background on it, so I can throw it there, and it will overlay as expected. Um, now, unfortunately, in the current state, and this is an alpha, so this may change in the future, if you have items linked, you can't put any effects on them, but singles you can. So I'll have to unlink these, and if you have multiple items selected, you can't put effects on either. So we just want to select this one, and we are going to go ahead and click this little icon here to add a cross dissolve, and you'll see it fades in, and it fades out as well here. Um, I actually don't want that one to fade out, so I'm just going to select the portion of the cross dissolve and delete that, and then we're going to add a cross dissolve to this one and delete the little bit from the front, and that's just deleting the cross dissolve. It's not deleting the frames so that it fades in it loops plays twice and fades out now you can right click on this pull up the properties and we could change the speed as well but that's just going to make the frames show longer so it like puts it to a slow mo slow mode more or less it won't automatically loop it we can also pull up the properties in here and we get a few different things we can change the frame rate um, we can change the name in the pool so we can say this should be warning animation and it will change the name there but it does not change it in the timeline but if I put out a new one it'll say warning animation and it's nice if you have names and you have a lot of media you can go ahead and do oh well warning animation there we go save yourself some time and you have that in the uh, the tree view as well uh, here you can also sort by the frame rate or the duration. Um, here, as far as I know, currently there's no way to sort. I believe it goes alphabetical order, but currently I don't think you can sort it. Uh, while we're in the media bin here, if you want to change the properties of your entire sequence, that's going to be sequence 01 here, you can change your resolution, your frame rate, all of this stuff by default when you create a new file which we may as well do because it doesn't matter 
just want to create a new project. I don't want to save it. And then the first piece of media we throw in, so I'll just throw a video in here. Of course, leave it. There we go. We throw this piece of media in. Um, and it has the audio and video tracks. And the sequence will be whatever resolution this is, which is 1920 by 1080. Okay, I kind of wanted a piece of media that wasn't that resolution. But evidently, um, everything I have is that or larger. But the first piece of media you put in will be your sequence size. I'm going to go ahead and open this project back up. Of course, now I'm missing those very important bits I added in. They weren't really that important. These are also little animations of a bunch of individual frames. But let's get to some of the uh, some of the fun stuff. So let's go ahead and just grab some videos here. Now you see when you import a video, you get the um, video track of the image and a track of the audio. And they're linked together, but of course they can be easily unlinked. Control L or you can right click and do link on link. But why do that when you have keyboard shortcuts? I'm just going to go ahead and delete that audio because it may contain copywritten music. By which I mean 100% for sure it contains copywritten music. If you have, and I happen to have, an audio clip that has multiple channels, you can pull it up here at the properties of it and it'll tell you all of the tracks. So this MKV file has one video and it has two audio channels. And you can disable audio channels right here. I could disable the video channel if I wanted. Um, but if I drag this file in, we get two audio tracks because it has two audio tracks. And of course, those we can delete independently of one another. And for these videos, if I didn't want to use any of the audio, I could just turn the audio off, import it, and it won't have... I guess import's really the wrong word, add it to the timeline, and it won't have it. Uh, speaking of the timeline, holding down the control key and scrolling zooms and then just normal scrolling will scroll you back and forth. The If you get to that point where you have enough video tracks, these can both be scrolled as well. And you can resize your tracks and you'll get thumbnails. But as far as I know, it's only of the first frame. So it's, I don't know, it might be useful to some people. I don't really see it as such. Oh, holding down the shift key will let you scroll up and down in these tracks. Um, I'm going to go ahead and those are the wrong thumbnails. Again, it's probably because it's still in alpha, but I don't know what to tell you about that. If we have, oh, I have to add that clip back in. Yes, we'll import it as an animation. I'm just going to throw it above this video here. We'll play it. It overlays as expected. Let's go ahead and animate some stuff. So we have the effects here. And we have a lot of effects we can add, actually. We can add blur. We can do some color stuff. We can do a bunch of distortions. Frior. I don't know if that's the right way to enunciate that, but there's... A whole slew of different effects you can do there. We can do keying, we can render stuff which we'll look at in a little bit, and we can do some stylization. So I'm going to go ahead and add a pixelate, which there is not nearly enough pixels. So I'm going to change that to 32, change this to 18. That still really isn't enough pixels to display anything, but okay, whatever, interesting. We're going to animate both of these values. So this is more or less the first frame. And we're going to go ahead and scoot to the end frame. Which would actually be there. And uh, I'm just going to, because I'm lazy, I'm just going to multiply by 10. And change that to 320 and 180. And it's automatically added a keyframe. You can see the little two dots there and the two dots there. And theoretically now, we're starting with a very low resolution and the resolution climbs up. Pretty nifty, pretty nifty. 
Now maybe we actually wanted uh, to do something different. We can pull up the graph editor. I just want it to exist as a, oh, as, as a window. I don't want to drop it into anything. I might not. No, I just, I just want to put it. Ah, whatever. Okay, so we have this. If we go here, click on horizontal pixels, there's not really a good way to tell what you're selected on. Um, but this is the keyframes. Click and drag up here to do that. And you can click and adjust these. So we could change this that it has a much higher horizontal pixel count. So when we scroll through horizontally, it should be a lot less pixelated than vertically. I don't really know why you would want to do that, but you can if you so desire. Um, scrolling works in here as well. Up and down to scroll up and down, shift to go side to side, and control to zoom. And if we want to add some more keyframes in, we can just click on the line and add them suckers right up in her and make something that's all kinds of crazy. But it gets even better. Maybe we don't want it to be linear. We want it to be a bezier to slowly ease in and ease out. And this one we actually want to hold, which will be pretty much zero difference because of how close they were. But you can see it's slowly easing. You can't really tell very well with this example. It's kind of a horrible example especially because that's literally like two frames, three frames. Um, so let's scoot that over and let's just play it and see what it looks like. And then it slowly eases out. You can't really tell it's easing out. It's not a long enough clip. It would have probably worked better had I been doing that on this clip. But let's look at a different thing. We'll just look at two different things here, like graffiti. Light graffiti is actually pretty sweet. Um, but it might not work on this because there's really not enough light. So just go ahead and delete that. You know, let's actually not even add an effect. Let's just play around with some of this. So anything that you see the little, uh, I don't know, is that a stopwatch? The little circle with the line in it, that means you can keyframe it. So we can go ahead and click that, enable a keyframe. And we now have keyframes for the position. Um, and because this has two different values, an X and a Y, we get two different lines in here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. So we can pull that up, click and add a new one, pull that down. I really have no idea where we are in the big scheme of things. I need to zoom this out more. Okay, I think this solid line and this solid line are our beginning and ends of the video. Uh, you can also middle mouse click, which I just discovered, to reposition as well. I don't know where the playhead is in this. I don't see it. Okay, so that solid line is actually not the beginning. I don't know what that solid line is then. Maybe it's minute markers, 30 second markers. I don't know. But we're just going to go crazy and add a bunch of motion here. If you have uh, optoleptasy or vertigo, you probably should look away when this finally plays. Something crazy like that. Um, my mouse just died. That's great. We should be getting to that point soon. We can see where the frames are there. Um, so currently this is the under track, this bottom one here. Here we go. We got some craziness going on. It's all out of frame. It's all over the place. We can, if we want, change these. And when you go to Bezier, you can also adjust them. So we can do that if we want and it kind of moves a little smoother. That's just way too far down, I guess. And we can also just grab it and move it where we want here. And it'll, 
it'll do all kinds of crazy but you can animate it that way as well if you want and of course you can still change what styles you're using there and you can change any of this other stuff so let's do something a little more practical because let's be real that was very impractical we'll cut it with the razor tool which you can easily select by just tapping the v key and we're going to go ahead and put this track underneath that so oh and i think we have to delete all the keyframes and um while we're at it we're gonna have to reset this which i think is supposed to be 960 by that's not right It should be half of 1920 by 1080. Half of 1080 would be, wouldn't that be 540? It would be, but somehow the anchor point got screwed up. And that I think should be zero and zero. And then this half of 1920, um, that's the 960. There we go. Oh yeah, so you can click on these and enter the value that way, or you can click and drag to do the value as well. So we have that 960 by 540. We're going to change this one. 960, 540. I think we've changed the anchor point to zero on both of these as well. All right. So there's really um, not a lot changing there because the cut literally is from it to itself so I'm gonna make another cut here didn't want that I want to deselect that do that all right so say we want to do transition between these two we could do a cross dissolve like we looked at before and that'll just fade from that track to the next track but you know what maybe we want something different than just a cross dissolve which currently is the only effect listed so we can do like a slide out so we'll go here and we will animate the position and then we'll go to the last frame and we will just slide this over um, or maybe we will uh, we'll just do it here I don't know if that's actually the right position to be adjusting. We will find out. Um, I guess I forgot to put a keyframe in. There we go, except this should be with my anchor points of zero and zero. And then this should be 960 and 540. All right, so we have keyframe in there and then this is the end and we want to just slide it off to nothingness and that should stay straight and we should now I guess we didn't slide far enough so we'll use this to jump to that keyframe and go further I don't know how negative I need to go Okay, evidently uh, a lot more. Maybe negative 960. Wouldn't actually surprise me if that were the case. Yep, negative 960 it is. So we'll go back to the last frame. Negative 960. And you know what? We are going to change this one to a Bezier. So it kind of eases in a little bit. And there we go. There we go. It's, it's a very long transition. Um, you probably wouldn't want to have a transition this long, but if you were doing like an image slideshow, you could. And boom, there it went. Transitioned. We're now at the, the next scene. And of course, we can also, if we want, transition to nothingness. That works just fine. Um, I suppose I should show off some of the audio capabilities. So let me find... Um, let me just grab some audio here. I've got a little bit of audio, so you'll see it, it draws out the audio. You get a few effects. 
but not a whole lot. You can change the gain of your tracks. You can pan it. Uh, if you have these VST plugins, you can load them. Um, I honestly have absolutely no idea what that is, but if you have it, you can you can use it. One thing I forgot to mention, which I should mention, say you're using, you're making like this custom slide transition, and every time it's going to be the same, the same duration, so it would work best if you were using an image, um, you know, and doing like a slideshow of images. What you can do is you can actually right click up here on the name of the effect, so I could do some more effects, and you'll see each one kind of gets its own little section. You can right click on that name and save settings to file and we can just call this trans and then um, I can actually click on another video such as this one and we can I don't want to paste I want to load settings from file and we'll just load this transition file here and this will if we scroll out um yeah okay I don't know exactly how the time coding works so it's doing this effect starting I don't know why my selections not working up in there that's weird I could select in here before I could what, what did I break Very interesting. It's not showing me my peculiar. Well, and there, I showed it there. Okay, so that's the frame that this is starting on. And this one, again, I don't know why I don't have a playhead in it. I think they're both running at the exact same time. Which makes it kind of useless for doing something like this but again if you have something that's you know a five second clip and at the end of it there should be a certain effect you could easily do that and reuse those effects over and over and over making it very powerful I actually do that in some of my gameplay videos where I have like a little rib well, it's not really gameplay videos but whatever I have a little ribbon that comes in and then it slides out and it's this exact same animation on every single video so just made an effect boom 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 done loaded on every single one stays the same I don't have to go through and reanimate the three keys four keys I guess so yeah that is oh let's look at exporting real quick um, you have all of these different formats you can output as you can do the into out which you can set set your endpoint set your out points so you could just render a short sequence so if I don't know we had some effects going on here and we want to see what the rendered output looks like we could do that or we could just export the entire project if we knew that the portion we were you know that the whole thing was good you know, if you don't want to render a whole project to double check how something looks once it's actually finished and then depending on what output type you're selecting you get different options so if you're doing something that's image only you can just get the image options audio um, that was a bad audio to pick because that one supports video I guess you can just get your audio options there if you're doing something that supports both you get your options for both of course and then you can pick your codecs and your resolutions and frame rates and adjust all this stuff you've got advanced for here you've got your audio options all that good stuff and then you just obviously hit the export button it asks you where to save it and it saves it but I won't do that because I don't know if uh, I want to risk trying to export while I'm recording the screen so I was editing and I realized I kind of made a big boo-boo I said I was going to mention the the render effects and uh, I never did so we'll do that real quick you can throw a time code in which 
should update for the time and you can throw I mean that's not wow wow that's not actually accurate because it's not the frame it's the time so maybe we should say time code but you can do that I don't want a time code though what I actually want is to do a text effect now if you do it the way I just did it adding it to the strip it'll show for the entirety of that strip not what we want I mean I guess there might be some cases where you do but if you do this little plus button here you can do a title click and drag to create your title and then we can say olive editor because that's what the name of this video shall be and we can change our font size make it nice and big I'm going to change it to a nice bright yellow um, that render glitch will hopefully disappear okay that's weird let's try there is something wrong with the letter V evidently I don't know what so we'll just go ahead and try a different font there we go that looks good and we will go ahead outline I don't really want an outline I do want a shadow though shadow color of black yeah shadow angle 45 is probably actually good shadow distance will make it a little further away shadow softness will make it a little softer but not too soft there we go it's it's subtle but you can see it we're gonna throw that to the beginning um it probably doesn't need to exist for nearly this long like i don't know i'm thinking maybe five ish seconds would be more than sufficient so i'll just jump to five seconds go ahead and cut that select the second portion and delete it and then i'm going to go ahead and actually put a if i could see the rest of this window put a cross dissolve on the tail end of that delete it from the front it plays it fades out boom shakalaka we can also do a solid color if you want you can get the SMPTE bars for when there's no signal and you can do checkerboards checkerboards which you can change the size of the checkers change the colors you actually only can change one color the black stays black you can change the opacity if you want you know you can do all sorts of cool stuff you can turn it on and off easily or go ahead and delete it all together which I will do there so that's how you do that very nice to be able to do that one um one unfortunate issue unless it has been fixed is if we do a title here and we just we just wow type a bunch of random text until it overflows the screen and then try to scroll through it we will there we go so the text goes larger than the screen if we change the position wrong position um, it doesn't it doesn't show us the other text and there's there's really nothing we can do to make it show it so if you want to do like a credits roll you can't really use this unless you just do a bunch of clips and have it animated from the bottom to the top you could do that what I've done is I just I'll make an image in GIMP with an alpha background throw all my text on that import it and then have a really long image and just scroll that through but yeah just uh, forgot to cover that in the video so I'm covering it now but that is a quick ish overview of olive um, you can download it from I don't have a web browser open so I won't pull up the page I'll just do this again you can download it from oliveeditor.org link in the video description available for I suppose I should have said this earlier available for Linux Mac and Windows I've been using it for probably about two months at the time of this recording I had very few issues with it and when I have had bugs that I've discovered or crashes I reported them and they they've all been fixed relatively quickly so that is really encouraging to see 
And that's going to wrap this up. So thanks for watching. And give Olive a try if you're looking for a good video editor. And I'll see you next time.